worship on this 24th Sunday after Pentecost, uh, the next to last Sunday of the Christian year as we await the celebration of Christ the King next Sunday. We welcome all who are worshiping uh, wherever you may be. Uh, if you're on our YouTube channel or Facebook page, you'll see a link off to the side or underneath that has the worship bulletin in it. So I encourage you to go ahead and open that up to be able to fully participate in our worship liturgy on this Lord's Day. Uh, today is also the Sunday after Veterans Day, and traditionally here at Living Springs, that's been a Sunday when we give thanks and recognize our veterans and those in military service and their families. Uh, at our outdoor worship this morning, uh, at the 10 a.m. outdoor worship, uh, we will be uh, offering special prayers for all veterans. Uh, you will see on the very last page of your worship bulletin a list of those veterans and military service individuals that are in our congregation. And also at the in-person uh, outdoor service, we'll, present, we'll be presenting two quilts of valor uh, to those who have served uh, uh, the longest uh, as we moved down the list. We began that several years ago and offered two quilts of valor to those who uh, had uh, are, are the oldest, who are oldest veterans in our congregation. And we're moving forward in the list and we'll recognize two more today. And we're very thankful for that honor. We're also thankful for all who came out to participate in our 11 days of the uh, Whitting Veterans Prayer Tree, uh, each day hanging 22 dog tags and as a symbolic reminder of uh, veterans who uh, take their lives, uh, uh, an average of 22 per day, a sad reality, and offered prayer and support for all of our veterans and their families as they go through uh, uh, some, some difficult moments often. Uh, coming back from their time of service for our land and for our freedom. So if you're by the church uh, on, on that prayer tree in the yard, uh, there are 242 dog tags now, and those will remain for a few additional days here in November if you might wish to come by and offer a moment of prayer uh, by the tree of prayer of thanksgiving. So at this time, uh, we will offer for our stream service, we'll offer a prayer of thanksgiving for our veterans and service member. Uh, in recognition of all those who will be recognized in person uh, today. Let us pray. Good God, we give thanks for the courage of our brothers and sisters in arms, for the strength of their backs and their wills, for their grit and their trustworthiness, for their spirit and determination, for their integrity and their skill. We give you thanks. May we stand with them as faithfully as they have stood with us. And may your strong arm defend and empower them daily. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Today is also a third Sunday, which means after this stream service from 1115 to 12 in the parking lot, we will be there to distribute communion for those who are not able to come to our in-person worship services. And Tuesday at noon, we also offer in-person worship here in the sanctuary uh, for our senior adults, especially a safe time for them as they continue to be at higher uh, risk. So we look forward to seeing any of you for, uh, for those two options. Uh, today is the second Sunday of our Congregational Forward and Generosity Emphasis, and uh, we, we give thanks for all who are participating in that and for uh, the generosity story and, and, and mission moment that we will hear at this time. Hi, this is Kay Herbert, and I am happy this morning to be able to share with you my generosity story. I believe that God is extremely generous with us. He's not just generous, he's abundantly generous. And I want to be more like my Heavenly Father, so I aspire to be more of a generous person. Got a long way to go, but I try to... Um, make myself more mindful of the fact that everything I have is from God. And even just the breath I just took in order to say that to you is from God. So God is generous and his people also get to participate in being generous. When I was a teenager, I had my first job as a waitress in high school. And somehow, even though I wasn't in a church that taught tithing, somehow I had the idea that you should tithe. Once you get a paycheck, you have to tithe, you should tithe. So I started giving, and I'm very thankful to have kind of gotten that idea early in life because it's just been in place as a, as a habit, as a discipline. And I haven't had to, 
you know, decide month after month and year after year whether to give, how much to give. It's just in place. And one thing it does for me is it gives me a reminder every month that um, God comes first. Everything I have is his. God comes first. And it reminds me to trust him. I mean, there are plenty of times when it would have been nice to have a little bit more to work with in terms of cash flow. But I have seen over and over again when money gets tight um, that the Lord provides in some of us in very unexpected ways. And so I love being able to have giving as a settled discipline in life just because of it teaches me. It teaches me to trust the Lord more. And um, I have a couple of friends that I help support who've worked with Christian mission organizations for many years. Both of them are in very difficult parts of the world where people have just um, extraordinarily difficult lives and very little opportunity to hear any kind of message of hope of God's love for them. And every month when I write my checks for them, even though I may pray for them on a daily basis, it gives me a reminder to settle down and focus and really pray. And then I just thank the Lord. I'm like, wow, I mean, I get to participate in what God is doing in these far-flung um, ends of the world. So that is something I really appreciate. And there are a couple of ladies in the Bible who challenge and inspire me in the area of giving. One of them is that little widow that Jesus pointed to when she was putting her two little coins in the temple offering. And, you know, all the rich people were coming along, tossing in their extra money. And Jesus said that she had put in all that she had to live on, that she had given more than any of them. And, you know, some of her friends might have said, well, you know, honey, just give 10%. You don't need to give it all. You know, you do have to eat. But somehow this little lady in ancient times had such a relationship with God that she was able to trust God and show her love to God by giving all that she had, even though it was just a teeny weeny little bit. And um, golly, I would like to trust God like that. And the other person who um, inspires me, challenges me, is Mary, who poured out that vial of perfume on Jesus' feet. And people criticized her. What a big waste of money. But he commended her. And I heard a preacher one time say, in reference to that story about that woman, he said, can anybody accuse you of being over extravagant in what you give to the Lord? I've never forgotten that, and I'm challenged by it all the time. I want to be um, a better giver because I want to just keep showing the Lord that I love him. I want to believe in him. I want to express my trust. And um, also, it's just a joy to give and then be part of something bigger than yourself. Thanks. Bye. Indeed, we open our hearts to the Spirit as we are all called to move forward in our generous giving for the work of the Lord uh, through Christ Church. Uh, one final reminder that November 8th through the 22nd, this 14-day period we're in now, we received a special uh, matching grant from ELCA World Hunger for our backpack food ministry for children. Uh, and, and if you would like to make a donation, uh, up to $500 will be matched through that ELCA World Hunger Grant for our Backpack Food Ministry. And the information is in the e-news how to make that contribution directly through ELCA World Hunger, and those contributions will be returned with a match so that we can double any gifts during these days, November 8th through the 27th. At this time, we prepare our hearts for worship by receiving the good news of God's forgiveness and love. And we may stand. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. We may kneel wherever we are this day.
O Holy One, we confess that we are not awake for you. We are not faithful in using your gifts. We forget the least of our siblings. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are infected by sin that divides your beloved community. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see you in our neighbor. Open our hands to serve your creation. Amen. Beloved, we are God's children, and Jesus, our beloved, opens the door to us. Through Jesus, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcomed. In Jesus, you are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promises prepared for us from the foundation of the world. Amen. Our worship continues in song.
everybody. Good morning. Good morning. This week I've been thinking about a phrase, in it for the long haul. You've heard that before, in it for the long haul. I think what made me think of it was looking at the calendar and realizing we've been in it for the long haul for eight months, eight months of pandemic. And the way we spend our days and our evenings, even the food we eat, it's a little different now. We're in it for the long haul. And that's a phrase that really I hear today in the Bible readings also. The first reading is from Thessalonians and Paul's talking to the people there and they're really impatient. They're waiting for Jesus to come back and he still hasn't come back. And Paul says, hey, we're in it for the long haul. And you know, 2,000 years later, we're still waiting. The second Bible reading is also about in it for the long haul. It's the story of a landowner and he brings all of his workers together and he gives money to each one. He gives talents to each one and uh, he entrusts them with his gifts. And that reminds me of how God gives us gifts. So I brought some things along this morning that remind me of gifts. This is uh, from lacrosse. Some of you may have the gift of, of being good at sports. Some of you may have a hammer at home and you're good at building things. And lots of us cook and uh, we have instruments like this at home, uh, spatulas and spoons to cook, and, and that's our talent, that's our gift. And sometimes when we have gifts, we're impatient with ourselves. We, then we think we should be instantly good at them. We don't recognize that it takes practice and that we're in it for the long haul. In the Bible story, the landowner goes away, and the Bible says he goes away for a long time. And the workers have been entrusted with gifts and they have a long time to lean in and live in their master's trust. That reminds me of us because when we're impatient, when we don't give ourselves a break, when we compare ourselves to other people, we feel we're just not good enough with the gifts and talents we've been given. Well, that's when we can remember we're in it for the long haul. And God's grace covers us. And he gives us a break as we learn to live in his grace and learn to use our talents over the long haul. So this week, think about what your talents may be and practice them, use them, share them with others. We're in it for the long haul together by the grace of God. Will you pray with me? Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus, be with us, be with us over, the long haul. over the long haul. Keep us close, Keep us close over, the long haul. over the long haul. Keep us using your gifts, Keep us using your gifts. Over, the long haul. over the long haul. Amen. 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 And this morning, we're continuing to collect our gifts in the bucket for those who are affected by natural disasters. And so thanks to all of you who are keeping those at home or bringing them in to share. Blessings, everyone. To hold the kings to account Your righteous justice shall not fail All those who trust in your name you will gather them in you will bring bring them home king of all kings
kings, Lord of all, Lord, you will gather them in. Sing out, sing out, you daughters of Zion. And shout aloud, oh, Israel. Be glad, rejoice with all your he has removed your punishment God will gather us in God will bring, bring us home King of all kings Lord of all God will gather us in, God will bring, bring us home, King of all kings, Lord of all. God will bring, bring us home. King of all kings, Lord of all lords. The first reading. Zephaniah, like the prophet Amos in last week's reading, presents the day of the Lord as one of judgment and wrath. Descriptions of the last day in the New Testament include details taken from the Old Testament accounts of the day of the Lord. A reading from Zephaniah. Be silent before the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is at hand. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice. He has consecrated his guests. At that time, I will search Jerusalem with lamps, and I will punish the people who rest complacently on their dregs. Those who say in their hearts, the Lord will not do good, nor will he do harm. Their wealth shall be plundered, and their houses laid waste. Though they build houses, they shall not inhabit them. Though they plant vineyards, they shall not drink wine from them. The great day of the Lord is near, near and hastening fast. The sound of the day of the Lord is bitter. The warrior cries aloud there. That day will be a day of wrath, a day of distress and anguish, a day of ruin and devastation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet blasts and battle cry against the fortified cities and against the lofty battlements. I will bring such distress upon people that they shall walk like the blind, because they have sinned against the Lord. Their blood shall be poured out like dust and their flesh like dung. Neither their silver nor their gold will be able to save them on the day of the Lord's wrath. In the fire of his passion, the whole earth shall be consumed. For a full, a terrible end, he will make of all the inhabitants of the earth. 
Word of God, Word of Life. Please join me in reading responsibly Psalm 90. Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to another. You turn us back to the dust and say, Turn back, O children of earth. For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday, when it is past, and like a watch in the night. You sweep them away like a dream. They fade away suddenly, like the grass. And the morning is green and flourishes, and the evening is dried out and bitter. For we are consumed by your anger. We are afraid because of your wrath. Our very beliefs you have set before you, and our secret sins in the light of your kindness. When you are angry, all our days are gone. We bring our years to an end, like a sigh. The span of our life is seventy years, perhaps in strength even eighty. Yet the sum of them is because they are in sorrow, for they pass away quickly and we are gone. Who regards the power of your wrath? Who rightly fears your indignation? So to teach us to number our days, The second reading, though we do not know and cannot calculate the day of Christ's return, we live faithfully in the here and now as we anticipate the day when we will be given eternal salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. A reading from 1 Thessalonians. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say, there is peace and security, (laughs) then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of the darkness. So then, let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night. And those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other as indeed you are doing. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. 
The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave. You knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers. And on my return, I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Let us pray. Oh God, we think of all the things your people were going through in the lives and in the world when your son Jesus appeared to bring hope. We think of his voice and how it spoke words of hope to uplift those who heard them. So too let us hear his voice this morning that we might be uplifted about his words of his vision of the kingdom of God. Speak to us that we might hear those words through your spirit and know your will. In Jesus' name, amen. We are close to the end. Now what am I talking about? Well, with all the craziness in our country and the world, political arguments, societal divisions, a pandemic, someone came up to me this week and shared a concern that they were worried the world was indeed coming to the end. But that's not the end I'm talking about here this morning. After 50 weeks, there are only two more weeks left in another year of our lives as Christians. What a year this has been. Next Sunday is Christ the King, and then it will be the end of another Christian year with the first Sunday of Advent and a new year for Christians just around the corner. But that's not the end I'm here to share with you about this morning either. What is this end I'm talking about? When our gospel lessons, we find Jesus himself getting close to an end. After 30 years of life here on this earth as a human being, after three years of giving every ounce of energy to the ministry of the kingdom, he has finally come to the holy city, Jerusalem, to celebrate the final Passover feast with his disciples. And all throughout the last week of his ministry, he has been in Jerusalem, in and around the temple, trying to help the religious leaders and everyone, <coughs> excuse me, Everyone else, including you and me, understand. To understand more deeply about the reign of God in people's lives. The kingdom of God he has brought near. 
to better understand who God is, to, ed- to better understand what God intended our lives to be. Jesus has been talking in parables, images and stories to help us understand Laborers in the vineyard, a father and two sons, a landowner and his tenants, a great wedding banquet, ten bridesmaids, five foolish and five wise. And now today in Matthew's gospel, Jesus shares with us a final parable immediately before his words about the judgment of the nations, which will end, inasmuch as you have done it to the least of these, you have done it unto me. The final parable of Jesus' ministry we hear today is a story about talents, a master and three servants. What do you take away from this final parable of Jesus? Now, before we get too far, there is one historical fact we better mention. The talents Jesus refers to in the parable are not abilities or particular skills as we might use the word talent in our modern English language. In the Bible, a talent originally was a measure of weight, approximately 34 kilograms around the day of Jesus. But by Jesus' day, the word had come to signify a specific sum of money, just like the word pound historically came to refer to a form of money in Great Britain still today. There are a couple of ways to calculate the value of a talent. One is by the current price of silver or gold per gram, but the most accurate way scholars do the calculation is the equivalent value of a worker's wage. In Jesus' day, a talent was equivalent to about 16 and a half years worth of wages for a common worker. Today in South Carolina, a full year's salary at minimum wage is $15,080. That's if you work 40 hours a week for 52 weeks a year. And we wonder why there is a crisis with affordable housing and poverty and homelessness. But back to the point. Say a common worker could make a little more than minimum wage. Maybe be blessed with $20,000 a year. That means the talent Jesus speaks about in the parable is the equivalent of about $300,000. 16 and a half years worth of a minimum wage. The first thing Jesus' parable tells us then is that when it comes to you and me, our heavenly master has been extremely generous. For you see, when the crowd heard this, they realized the first slave was entrusted with a minimum of what in our day would be over a million and a half dollars. The second slave was entrusted with over a half a million dollars. The third slave with 300 grand. The first slave doubles the master's money, comes back with three million. The second does the same, comes back with 1.2 million. The third, however, played it safe, ended up with what he was given to begin with, the same 300,000. Now, what do you take away from this final parable of Jesus? Knowing that his original listeners heard it as a parable about a great amount of money. On one level, we might all look at our bank accounts, especially given what has happened in the past five or six months, and say, well, Jesus, no way your parable has anything to do with me. But just as those listeners in Jerusalem might have been surprised by the extravagant numbers in Jesus' final parable, so too we might be surprised in a different way. Just to think about it, get a grasp on it, suppose you are able to work from maybe age 25 to 65, and suppose over those 40 years you earn a meager average of of 25,000 a year. For some it might be lower, for many it might be higher. You can do your own math. 
But the baseline is this. For people here in our country, it means we have been entrusted with a whole lot more than we think. Over a million dollars at least per person in a lifetime. In actuality, much more. Even over a million dollars at a minimum wage. Jesus' final parable about the kingdom used extravagantly big numbers like five talents, three talents, one talent, two talents to remind his listeners and us that even in difficult times, our heavenly master blesses us with an abundance in this life that is often much greater than we ever realize. It's an invitation for us to let go of our human worries about hanging on to what we have and rejoice that we have a master who has blessed us with so very much. And truth be told, just because we are blessed to live here in this country rather than someplace like sub-Saharan Africa or the slums of Calcutta, well, you and I in this parable are the ones who have, for whatever reason, been blessed with the greater amounts, the two or five talents even in challenging times. The parable says that the master gives each according to his ability. And the truth is that here in this country, you and I have the ability to do more, see more, learn more, earn more than over two-thirds of the rest of the world's population. Yes, Jesus' final parable speaks about a master who is extremely generous blessing servants and so it is that we are blessed with generosity even in times when we might be led to think otherwise more than that Jesus final parable reminds us that our master is amazingly trusting in Jesus day it would have been unheard of for a master to entrust such large sums to common servants. And yet, this is what God has done with you and me, isn't it? Yes, God has entrusted people like you and me with enough resources to ensure that no person in the world would go hungry. For example, for less than $10 a day, a family in Africa or India could be fed. For less than $2 a day, an affordable housing trust fund could be established here in Colombia to ensure adequate housing for everyone. Just small amounts. Which means that even within our difficult times, we here in our country still have access to enough to ensure hope and healing for God's human family. If only we choose to invest what God has given us in the healing work of God's kingdom grace for all. God has entrusted you and me, trusted you and me to see that no one in God's family will hunger or live without shelter or be in need if only we will take the risk. But more than that, God has amazingly entrusted you and me with something more valuable than millions and millions of dollars. God, our heavenly master, has entrusted you and me with what the world needs to avoid spiritual starvation. God has entrusted you and me with the good news of God's love with the message of hope and grace and forgiveness and compassion that Jesus brought into the world to bring the kingdom of God, the reign of God, near in people's lives. God has entrusted you and me with the treasure of forgiveness and eternal life. I remember the story of a man whose most valuable possession was the pocket watch given to him by his father which had been given to him by his father and to him by his father and so on. The man had many children, but as he lay dying on his bed, he called over his youngest daughter and asked her to hold out her hand. She thought he simply wanted to hold on to her, but instead he placed in her hand the most precious possession he had wrapped in a handkerchief with his initials. 
that pocket watch that had been given to him by his father and passed down through the generations. I'm entrusting this to you, he told his youngest daughter. Your brothers want to bury it with me, but that's no good. Of all the family, you're the one who will make sure it's passed on. And so it is with you and me. Out of all the billions of people in this world who are part of God's human family, all of us, for whatever reason, our Heavenly Father has reached out the divine hand and placed in you the most precious possession of all. The message of love and salvation and forgiveness and hope and justice and compassion of God's kingdom all wrapped, not in a handkerchief, but in the good news of Jesus. You are the one that has been marked with the cross. You are the one that has been blessed with the Holy Spirit. You are the one entrusted with the treasure of your heavenly Father. Not to go and safely bury it in the ground, so that at the end of your life you have nothing to show the master but what you were given, but instead to go out and make some kingdom investments in people's lives and take some risk for the sake of others. Take the risk of speaking up about Jesus, of living in love for all like Jesus. Take the risk of sharing your faith with someone who may look at you like you're a religious nut if you do. Take the risk of standing up to your friends on Facebook or at school or wherever and saying no to hateful words that they share about others. Take the risk of setting a different set of priorities for your family. Take the risk of living what Scripture says God desires each and every one of us as we seek to do what God requires of us in response to God's abundant grace. Take the risk to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with God every day. Take the risk of taking all that God has blessed you with, entrusted you with, your time, talent, and treasure, and investing it for the sake of the kingdom. The amazing good news is that God trusts you, has entrusted you. God, the master, has entrusted you and me, frail, imperfect, broken, baptized, and beloved servants with the abundance of God's grace. And God has entrusted you and me not to bury it in the ground and give it back, but to pass it on to grow the kingdom in the lives of others in this hurting world, especially now in these days. This is the type of master we have, a master who is generous beyond all comprehensions, so abundantly generous that he would even give us his son, a master who is trusting beyond all comprehension. Almighty God, creator of the universe, has entrusted you and me with an abundance of grace to ensure that her world will be cared for. Almighty God, creator of the universe, has entrusted you and me with the abundance of compassion and forgiveness so that her world might now have hope and reconciliation in saving grace, especially in difficult moments. Which, if nothing else tells us that God is the master who is willing to risk it all. Not a conservative, play it close to the vest, keep it safe, bury it in the ground type of master. In the words of the parable, a master who seeks to reap even where he does not sow and gather where he does not scatter. One who takes the risk of time and energy and resources and goes out into places where no logical expectation would suggest there would be a harvest. And yet he goes expecting that miraculously there he will find results. 
you catch it in the parable? The servants the master commends as trustworthy are not the ones who played it safe, but instead the ones who risked it all. Just like he, God, the master, has risked everything for us. In the end, Jesus' parable reminds us that nothing we have is ours. That everything we have, our time, our talent, our treasure, is entrusted to us by the master. And that our view of life as Christians is that everything we have has been given to us. It is on loan to us from the master. Entrusted to us to produce results and grow the kingdom during the 30, 40, 50, 70, 90 years we are blessed to be here on earth. Until that day when we will see our master face to face. In the end, Jesus' final parable tells us that our master is oh so generous, giving us an abundance that we could not imagine. In the end, Jesus' final parable tells us that our master is so amazingly trusting has entrusted all that he has to you and to me. In the end, Jesus' final parable tells us that our master is all about taking risk, willing to risk everything, even his own son, for our sake and for the sake of this world that God still so loves. In the end... Jesus' final parable reminds you and me that we are servants of this generous, trusting, risk-taking master. Servants who will each one day stand before him. And by the power of the Spirit, by the grace of God, by the grace of the cross, by the grace of Jesus, long to hear these words. Well done, good and trustworthy servant. You have been worthy of my trust in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Thanks be to God. Amen. This is my song, O God of all the nations, a song of peace for lands of far and wide. This is my
As people trusting in the grace of God, we lift up our voices and confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died from the Spirit. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Lord of the church, ignite your people with the passion of your love. By the fire of your Holy Spirit, unify us across ministries, congregations, and denominations, and refine us to participate in your activity throughout the world. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Lord of creation, we stand in awe at the works of your hands and praise you for the beauty of nature. Bless the earth for your glory and restore its integrity where exploitation has caused ruin. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Lord of the nations, sound forth your justice in the ears of all leaders. Increase concern for those who are most vulnerable especially as international leaders forge agreements and cooperate to end human rights abuses. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Lord of all in need, search out all who cry to you in distress. Scatter the heavy clouds of depression, grief, chronic illness, unemployment, and loneliness with your radiant light. Send us as encouragement and signs of your healing. We pray especially for Wendy McKenzie, Wendy. Anita Gabber, Anita. Will Angelica, Eliana, Gabriella Collins, Collins. Eric Fink, Peg Zeke. Peg. Sue Bradham, Sue. Carl Schmidt, Carl. Elizabeth Maddox, Elizabeth. Henrietta Kaiser, Henrietta. Gwen Brantley, Gwen. Debbie Smith, Debbie. Tammy Mancuso, Tammy. Ed Brennan, Ed. Margaret Blank, Margaret. Charles Kaufman, Charles. Beauty Talbert, Beauty. Pam Desselman, Pam. Judy Jennings, Judy. Kelly Cozio, Kelly. Lila Bell, Lila. Wilma Bracy, Wilma. Charles Levitt, Charles. Jared Vopel, Jared. and those we name before you now, either silently or aloud. All those still recover from storms, hurricanes, fires, first responders, emergency workers. Families of veterans who have taken their lives. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Lord of the stranger, stir up holy restlessness in us to extend love to those at the margins. Release our desire for control and open us to learn from the perspectives of others. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Lord of the living and the dead, we give you thanks for all the saints at rest from their labors. Rouse us to live by their example, 
that saints yet to come may also know your love. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is O God, as we face the ongoing uncertainties around this coronavirus, we continue to pray for our nation and the world. Protect the most vulnerable among us, those who are currently sick, in isolation, awaiting test results. Grant wisdom, patience, and clarity to our leaders, disciples, vaccine researchers, educators, essential workers as their daily work puts them at risk. Fill us with patience and guide us as, as we consider how best to continue to respond in our families, congregations, workplaces, schools, and communities. Give us ongoing courage to face these days, not with fear or self-centeredness, but with compassion, concern, and acts of loving service for others, trusting that you abide with us always. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also and with you. We share a sign of peace with those gathered among us today. Peace, Christ, peace, Christ, peace, Christ, peace, Christ, peace, Christ, peace. In these days, we continue to give thanks to God for all the offerings of love for our Lord that are given and created in different ways to carry on the ministry of Christ Church, uh, the offerings that are brought here, uh, done through your bank arrangements, uh, via the Giveify app. And at this time, we present the offering plate to the Lord's altar, uh, signifying all those offerings of love for our Lord as we move forward in our generosity. Let us pray. God of all goodness, generations have turned to you, gathered around your table, and shared your abundant blessings. Number us among them, that as we gather these gifts from your abundance and give thanks for your rich blessings, we may feast upon your very self and care for all that you have made. Through Jesus Christ, our sovereign and servant. Amen. Again, Holy Communion will be distributed after the streaming uh, here in our parking lot from 11.15 to 12. All are welcome at this, the Lord's meal. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and prayers. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out your spirit of love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. There is a place for you at the banquet. Come and feast at Jesus' table. Thanks be to you, God. strengthens us for service, give you reason to rejoice and be glad. The blessing of God, Sovereign Savior and Spirit, be with you today and always. Amen. Amen. Amen.
beloved of God, go in peace to run the race and move forward in faith. Thanks be to God.